From the Capitol, where the House passed the most comprehensive gun bill since the legislation passed after Sandy Hook in 2012. The package introduced by Governor Ned Lamont aims to stop the scourge of shootings, prevent gun accidents, and suicide. House Bill 6667 has left the House, but apparently there have been some modifications to the bill. Welcome to another installment of Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms, your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like my channel, like my content and what I do here, you can support me with the link in the description box. Everything is appreciated, but let's talk about this. Obviously, we all know as con Connecticut constituents, that HB 6667 has been passed out of the House with a technically a by you know, party line vote with some Republicans going one way and other Democrats going the other. But it is now moving on to the Senate. But some things have transpired since that time. One thing that's happened is now that Stastrom and those of us who lived in Connecticut long enough know who, what he's about and who he's, you know, we, we know his agenda, his game. And a senator, Winfield, have made an amendment. They call it an 8693. And this is concerning the open carrying of firearms, and they've amended it. And I just want to briefly go over that. As you know, the amendment, uh, they're trying to ban open carry. But this is an amendment that they put on. And this is the change. No person shall knowingly carry any firearm with intent to display such firearm except when such person is within such person's dwelling house or on land leased or owned by such person or within the place of business of such person or such person is engaged in firearm training or bona fide hunting activity. For the purpose of this subdivision, a person shall not be deemed to be carrying a firearm with intent to display such firearm if such person has taken reasonable measures to conceal the fact that such person is carrying a firearm. Neither a fleeting glimpse of a firearm nor an imprint of a firearm through such person's clothing shall constitute a violation of the subdivision. If a person displays a firearm temporarily while engaged in self-defense or other conduct that is otherwise lawful, such display shall not constitute a violation of this subdivision. It, it, then there it is. That's all I can say about it. This is the change that they're trying to put in. It's of no consequence when it comes to crime and violence. But once again, they just want to feel good and say, hey, here's a little crumb for you. Bunch of garbage. But like I said, things have been modified and I want to bring up this here okay we're bringing it up here where to go here we go okay these are the changes and this is coming from the CCDL once again congrats to them and we're lucky to have them but they've definitely been on top of this so of the 12 parts to this bill some things have been defeated and some things have been modified. Now, the ban and register of 22s has been defeated. Bulk purchasing has been modified. Now, let me be clear. I don't know what modified means. And I guess this is going to be one of those. So when you hear me say modified, I don't know why. Because this is, as far as I can see, is going to be an Obamacare moment. Like Pelosi said, well, we got to sign it for you can see what's in it. So this is what this is literally going to come down to. But ban rifle sales to 18, 20 year olds defeated. Pistol permit training expansion modified, which once again, I don't know what that is. Pistol mag disconnect chamber indicators defeated. Banned body armor modified. Additional waiting period defeated. State FFL permitting modified. Now, it's all good and dandy, but I don't know what modified is. So we, unless we know what modified means, it's of no consequence. But I want to come over this... I'm going to leave, try to get these into the link below. Some of this stuff I had to download. Some of it is on the internet. And this is the OLR, OLR bill analysis to 6667. And this is their breakdown. And I'm, I'm going to come down to okay, the additional educational requirements as an NRA instructor. This obviously is going to affect me and my business. But 
Under current law, applicants for long gun and handgun eligibility certificates and handgun permits must have successfully completed a DESPP approved firearm safety and use course, which may include one available to the public of offered by local law enforcement agency, private or public educational institution, firearms training school using instructors certified by the NRA or DEPP or DEEP, sorry, or two conducted by an NRA or state certified instructor. For applications for these credentials filed on or after July 1st, 2024, the bill instead requires applicants to complete within two years before submitting their application a DESPP approved course on firearm safety and use, which may include certified NRA courses or those by other organizations that are conducted by a certified NRA instructor or by the state. The course must include instruction on state law requirements on safe store firearm storage in the home and in vehicles and lawfully using firearms and carrying firearms in public. It specifies anyone holding a valid handgun permit before July 1st, 2024 does not have to do any additional training. The bill allows anyone who wants to provide the course for handgun permits to apply for by the to commissioner as he prescribes. He must approve or deny the application for the course by July 1st, 2024 if the application was submitted by October 1st, 2023. I'm not even vaguely sure what that means. Does that mean that NRA instructors now have to resubmit the, their qualifications? Are their qualifications still good? What is this additional training they're talking about? Who is qualified to give that? Are they given a course to teach you what they want you to teach the applicant? They're not telling you anything. This is why the whole modified thing is very troublesome because once again, what does it mean? This language is uh, just too generalized and it doesn't tell me anything. And Quite honestly, I think it's a bunch of garbage. As I said before, this is basically they're using this to phase out the NRA instruction course to then have a state approved course that only the state can give. Tell me I'm wrong. If they're gonna if they can be more clear on their language and what this means, I'll take that back. But as far as I can see it, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to have a state only course with more hours, more time more money to discourage people from applying for their permits. That's all I see right now. But once again, I said I will try to get the this into the description box of both these items. So those are the updates. It's going forward to the Senate, and they seem to be very confident it will pass as is. Until we know what modified means, I'm not going to be too joyous about what they've done. I don't know what modified means. I'd rather this whole thing just go away because it's not going to solve crime. But that's not the point, is it? But here's the update for you. Once again, I'll try to keep this information in the description box. If not, I'll put the bills and the modifications and the amendments in the description box that you can then perhaps Google or look at. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence, Will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.